We all know that ultra processed foods aren't good for us, but I recently did some digging and was absolutely shocked and disgusted to learn just how impactful these ultra processed foods are on our health, on our mental health, as well as on our environment. So today I'm sharing 10 absolutely insane facts about ultra processed foods that you must know. Let's dive into it. My name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition human performance. And today's video is sponsored by Jen. More on them in a bit. Okay, the first thing to note is that people who eat ultra processed foods tend to eat about 813 more calories per day. There have been a lot of different studies on ultra processed foods and seeing how much more people eat when they eat primarily ultra processed foods versus minimally processed. One small trial found that those who ate primarily ultra processed ate about 813 calories more per day. It also resulted in about 1.1 kilograms of weight gain per week. So that's a little over 2.2 pounds of weight gain every week. Another study found that those who ate ultra processed foods ate about 508 extra calories per day and gained about a kilogram more versus those who switched to a minimally processed diet without counting calories actually lost that same kilogram. Okay, the second thing you need to know is that ultra processed foods have addicted like qualities similar to other substances, specifically highly processed fats and carbs, especially in combination. Those have been found to have addictive like behaviors similar to other addictive substances. Withdrawal, difficulty stopping despite negative outcomes, as well as diminished control control over intake. The third thing to know is that ultra processed food makes up about 60% of our daily intake and sadly close to 70% of what kids eat. This could be why one in five US kids are considered obese as well as over 40% of Americans, which this fact alone just makes me think back to that 1920s video I did where I found this book that was published in the early 1920s and it was their recommendations on how kids should eat in order to have the maximum best health. It specifically recommended things like meat and milk and veggies and tomatoes and carrots as well as organ meats and also specifically cautioned against what they called energy giving foods which was their term of ultra processed it said that those energy giving foods are things like sweet desserts that are high in sugar and really easy to eat a lot of although they are very nutrient poor which over 100 years later that advice could not be even more applicable than it is now especially considering that we are eating about 60 to 70 percent of our intake from those very foods okay the fourth thing that you need to know about ultra processed foods is that it's 73 percent of our US food supply. There is just no hiding from ultra processed foods. It is everywhere. That's nearly three quarters of the grocery store is just ultra processed junk. Cookies, cakes, candies, chips, crackers, snack packs, kids snack food items, frozen dinners, protein bars, baked goods. It's everywhere. And sadly, not only is this food everywhere, but as we already noted earlier, it's highly addicting. Now, before we move on to the other crazy facts, I want to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Jem. Jem is a really cool whole food multivitamin supplement and I'm typically not a fan of most multivitamins because brands will use low quality ingredients and fillers or they're not in their bioavailable forms but especially since we're talking about ultra processed foods I was particularly impressed with Jen because they use whole food ingredients while still covering so many nutritional bases plus Jen just tastes so good like I legitimately look forward to taking it every single day it's slightly tangy a little bit sweet I like to take mine with my breakfast I take one of those little bites per day and Jen believes in eating vitamins the way nature intended. Each of their bites are packed with over 20 whole food vitamins, minerals, superfoods, prebiotics, and probiotics to help fill the gaps in daily nutrition. I love that Gem is a chewable vitamin made from whole food ingredients like fermented chickpeas for vitamin K2, quinoa sprouts for B vitamins, turmeric for inflammation, and pumpkin seeds and trace minerals for zinc. Gem takes a holistic approach to health and uses whole food ingredients that work best together to best be absorbed in the body. It tastes great and makes taking a daily supplement easier. Remember, and actually enjoyable. And right now for my community, Gem is offering 50% off your first month. So make sure you head over to dailygem.com forward slash autumn Bates and use my code autumn Bates at checkout so you don't miss out on the discount. I'll also have it linked down description below so you don't miss out. Okay, the fifth absolutely mind blowing fact about ultra processed foods is that higher intake of ultra processed foods significantly increases the chances of depression, obesity, and all cause mortality. Here's just a few mind blowing things from this one study. For every 10% increase in calories, consumed as ultra processed foods per day, adults experience an 11% higher risk of depression. Also increased consumption of those ultra processed foods leads to increased risk for all cause mortality, as well as cause specific mortality, cardiovascular disease, overweight and obesity, increased body fat, diabetes, cancer, and gastrointestinal diseases. In other words, a calorie is simply not a calorie. Some calories like the ultra processed foods calories are going to have a much higher impact in a negative way on all 
aspects of health. Okay, the sixth fact you need to know is that whole food intake has drastically decreased. And even just recently, one study showed that just within the past few years, whole food intake decreased from just 32.7% of the diet, which is already dismally low, to 27.4%, which means just about a quarter of the diet is from whole food ingredients, the rest from processed. And this is also mostly due to people recently eating a lot less dairy as well as meat. So we essentially swapped out the protein dense and micronutrient dense dairy and meat that is really rich in important things like iron and calcium and vitamin K2 and protein for satiety and preventing osteoporosis and muscle loss and maintaining the metabolism. We swapped all that out just for like more processed food. Okay, the seventh fact you need to know is that this is regardless of income. More than a hundred years ago, these sugary, more processed foods was considered more of a wealthier thing. So you would see issues of obesity or like diabetes or some of these other diseases in more of the wealthier communities. And then those who were more lower income just couldn't afford those processed sugary foods. So they inherently ate a lot more whole foods and as a result, didn't get as many of those lifestyle diseases. Then ultra processing came into play and government subsidies making a lot of these ultra processed ingredients really cheap to produce also came into play, which means that the cheaper foods were these ultra processed foods. So it became more of a lower income issue of having issues like obesity, diabetes, et cetera. But now studies are showing that income doesn't matter. It is across the board. Everyone is really struggling with these ultra processed foods. And this is probably just because it is so available. People also have lost the skill of cooking. Like I know with my mom, she had home ec and they actually learned like how to cook like basic things. When I was in school, we did not have home ec. And so my generation wasn't really taught like basic skills of cooking and maybe their parents were busy working and so they wouldn't cook. And so those kids didn't learn how to cook either. And as a result, we've started to shift to those pre-made foods, those ultra processed foods, which ultimately has really not served any of our health. Okay, the eighth thing you need to know is ultra processed foods are really bad for the environment. Ultra processed foods rely heavily on just a few ingredients, namely like corn and wheat and soy. And we have cleared so much land throughout the US just to plant these crops and it has really hurt the biodiversity of our nation. It also doesn't help that these are often heavily sprayed items and the lack of biodiversity can ruin the topsoil. By having the same types of things planted over and over and over, it's just pulling those same nutrients out and never adding in other nutrients back in. And because of this, some are estimating that we only have between 45 to 60 years more of topsoil left to actually farm. This is opposite of more of the regenerative farming practices where you have a bunch of different types of plants that are also integrated with animals like chickens, as well as sheep, as well as cows, things that will add different nutrients back in to help regenerate the soil, add nutrients back in and make it so it's so much better for the environment. Okay, the ninth thing to know about ultra processed foods is that it's just highly socially acceptable. To put this into perspective, most people know not to overdo alcohol. Like if you had a friend or a coworker that you saw coming into work who was drunk every day or who was getting multiple DUIs, you would be concerned for that person, you would probably want to reach out and help that person and help to get them back on the right path. And these actions would be done out of love to try and help that person. Because ultimately you don't want that friend or family member or coworker to suffer and possibly hurt themselves or others. But on the flip side, if you know somebody who drinks a coffee with 80 grams of sugar, along with a cinnamon roll for breakfast, and then at lunch they have like a bunch of fries that are cooked in highly processed seed oils, along with like a milkshake, they're snacking all day on prepackaged cookies, and they're constantly drinking soda, it's likely not going to garner really Really much of a response. And that's even though we know about the long-term and even short-term impacts of these highly processed foods, what they do to our health and our mental state. And why is that the case? Ultimately, it's just because it's socially acceptable. It's all around us. It's marketed to us. Everyone is doing it. So it's the idea that if everyone is doing it, then it really must not be that bad. Okay, the 10th thing you need to know about ultra processed foods is that it's not easily defined and this causes a lot of problems. There isn't just a clear cut definition of what's considered an ultra processed food. And a lot of companies are taking advantage of that. It makes it really easy for different companies that create a lot of these problematic ultra processed foods to lump those things like sodas and cookies into other types of processed foods like canned goods, canned tuna into the same category, which obviously canned tuna and canned veggies even actually have nutrient density. They haven't gone through that intense processing that the ultra processed foods have, and they actually contain nutrient value. But you will sometimes see these articles pop up where it's it's like researchers saying that ultra processed foods really aren't that bad for you. And that's because they're lumping it together with these processed foods like canned tuna. But then you'll also find articles that's kind of debunking a lot of these claims and show that the researchers or experts who are saying that are often paid in some way by those companies that make the ultra 
processed foods. So it's really important to have a rough idea of what these different categories of processing are because not all processed foods are inherently really bad for you, but you don't want that to confuse you into thinking that sodas are a good thing. So I break it down into four categories. The first is unprocessed. Unprocessed is literally like the raw form of a food. So think like pulling a carrot straight out of the ground or eating a raw piece of fish at a sushi restaurant, but without the rice. Food in its raw whole form is going to be unprocessed. And then you have minimally processed. This means that you have some type of cooking. So for example, you take that raw steak and you cook it on a grill. That has gone through minimal processing. Or you dice up some veggies and you roast it in a pan, again, minimally processed. And then we have where it gets tricky between processed and ultra processed. So processed foods, these are the types of processes that can be done by somebody even in your home kitchen. So it might be like canning foods or perhaps drying different meats, like making beef jerky or aging or fermenting foods. So this could be like cheese or sauerkraut or kimchi or yogurt. All of those are technically processed foods, but as you can see are very nutrient dense foods that have a lot of nutritional value. And then we have ultra processed foods. These are going to use ingredients that you can't find in a typical kitchen. This is where you'll see artificial flavors, artificial sweeteners, colors, dyes, vegetable oils, processed and enriched flours, and high fructose corn syrup, just to name a few. These are ingredients that you can't make at home. They require extensive processing or some type of chemical to make it. So when you see those items, that's when you can mark it off in your head as ultra processed. Our goal really should be to aim for 90% or more of our food coming from that processed or less processed category. So either unprocessed, minimally processed or processed, or even like 100% of our food would be great. But even just taking that stat of 60 to 70% of our intake coming from ultra processed foods and reducing it down to 10% would be such a vast improvement. So much more nutrient dense, so much more blood sugar stabilizing and so much better for our overall health. And really the easiest way to do that is to start preparing your food at home. In fact, studies have found that people who prepare their food at home tend to have lower body fat and it doesn't have to be complicated. Like I have a very, very simple cottage cheese bowl recipe that went absolutely viral. You have to check it out. It's just a few ingredients. I'll have it linked right up here. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.